morning. Please join us in singing hymn number 721, Praise to the Lord, verses 1, 2, and 4. Praise to the Lord, number 721. this Holy Mass, I offer the intentions for community of intentions for Marianne and Anton Pace in commemoration of their 61st wedding anniversary, and for Frank Dunn in his continued health improvements, and for the souls of Jose Gimotea, Magdalena Gimotea, Peter Lagoshi, Michael Mangiliano Sr., Daniel Pinto, and Luis O'Connor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel who answered, here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said, go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again, the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said, you called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son, go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, speak for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. Prescribed for me to do your will, O God, 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John was standing with two of his disciples and he watched Jesus walk by. He said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translates as teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. And so they went and saw where Jesus was staying and stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother, Simon, and told him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which translates Peter. The Gospel of the Lord.
My parents, obviously, my grandmother, my siblings on occasion, um, my aunts and uncles as well on occasion, Father Barron, my first pastor, was my, my childhood pastor, Monsignor Joseph Calice, priest of my youth and in my teenage years, Bishop Cisneros, the rector of my college seminary, Monsignor Caserta, my first spiritual director, my um, rector and, and close friend and, and mentor, Monsignor Bob Thalen, Bishop DiMarzio many times, Bishop Brennan certainly, countless priests on occasion, both in my diocese here and dioceses around the country. No, this is not my Emmy's speech thanking all of my producers and my agents. These are just a list of some names, some names who have played an important role in my life, directing me back to Jesus Christ. Just some of the names, there's countless others, so many different occasions, so many different opportunities, so many different crises, and, 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 and when things were, seemed to be up in the air, these were some of the people that helped point me back to Christ, that helped me center me back in my relationship, to help deepen my faith. I pray that my name is on the minds and hearts of many as well when they think about who helped them center themselves, find themselves, point them back to Christ. The readings today speak to us about those people in our lives. Eli, Eli, here I am. You've called me? I didn't call you, go back to sleep. Eli, Eli, here I am, you've called me? Eli, understanding the Lord, knowing the Lord in a deep relationship with the Lord, understood it's not me who's calling, it's the Lord calling him. Let me help teach this youth. Let me help direct this youth to whom he should respond, to where he should go. Let me help center him, let me help direct him. Eli, you called me? No, I didn't call you. But the next time you hear that call, respond this way, with the wisdom of my age, with the wisdom of my knowledge and my faith. Respond, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Then watch what happens. John the Baptist and his disciples see Jesus walking by. John the Baptist recognizing he's not the Messiah, that John the Baptist is not the Messiah, knowing who he was and who he wasn't, says to his disciples, behold the Messiah, the Lamb of God, he who takes away the sins of the world, behold him. That's the one, he's the one that should, that should have your attention, that should have your direction. He's the one, behold him. John the Baptist was for his disciples and certainly then for Andrew. And Andrew who encounters Christ. And Andrew then to bring his brother Simon. And you see the ripple effects, the ripple effects just simply by following and centering our lives on Christ and directing others to Christ. Today is an opportunity for us to think about that in our lives. First and foremost, who have helped us to direct ourselves to Christ? Especially in moments of great trouble, and in moments of great anxiety, in moments of, of sickness or worry or concern, but just even in those small moments when we're humbled and we're reminded Place your trust in God, follow him, center yourself in Christ. But it's also an opportunity for us to think about how are we living that invitation to be that person for others, to be that person for others, to invite others to come and center themselves, to focus themselves and focus their attention and their direction on Jesus Christ. How are we doing? in that, if we're to be honest with ourselves, to take inventory of our lives. We have to give thanks to the people who have led us here, the people who have inspired us to be here. Sometimes they, they've inspired us by their words, by their, by their actions, by their example, by their way of life. 
Sometimes the opposite is true. They inspire us by what we know we don't want to be. I don't want to be selfish like that person. I don't want my whole life to be materialistic like that person. I want to place myself and my trust and my faith in God. My, place myself fully in his hands. Sometimes we, we can see someone really not living the, the way in which we're called to live and say, I don't want to be like that person. I want to be a better example of that. It's a good motivation. It's a motivation. But then how are we in turn inviting others? How are we pointing them towards Christ? Like Eli, like St. Paul, like John the Baptist, like St. Andrew. This funny story about St. Andrew is St. <laughs> Andrew is the first one really to encounter Christ. How much do you know about St. Andrew? How much do you know about Peter? A lot more. Simon Peter, Peter, the first pope. Peter, upon this rock I will build my church. Peter, here are the keys to the netherworld. Where's Andrew? Andrew is the one who pointed him, though. Andrew was the one who invited him, though. Andrew was the one who said, Simon, said to his brother, Simon, I think we found him. We found the Messiah. Come and see. And from there, the rest is history. It's our duty as Christians to help build each other up, to help grow in faith, to grow in, in holiness, to, to help ourselves certainly grow in faith and holiness, to help our friends, our family members. It's your duty as spouses to pray for the holiness and sanctity of your husband or of your wife, to grow in holiness with one another. It's your duty as parents to help inspire your children to be the first teachers of the faith. As though were the, those were the first names that I recall today, certainly my parents who helped direct me. It's our duty as Christians to help evangelize, to go out and baptize all nations in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus doesn't say, just sit at home and keep your faith to yourself. He says, no, go out and be and work. As I mentioned last week, a church in action, a church in motion. Being the, that, those members of that church in motion means that we are the members that help spread that gospel message, that help point others to Christ. And what a great opportunity you all have. I, I think you have a much more of an opportunity than I do, although in this great assignment with the, the blessing of Net TV, I think uh, reaching thousands of people each Sunday at Mass, that's a pretty pretty uh, honorable and, 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 and humbling experience. But I can't reach your coworkers. I, I, can't, I can't reach your siblings who are not here. I can't reach your children or your grandchildren the way you can. What a great opportunity is for all of us to help point our friends, our families, our members to Christ, like Eli, like St. Paul, like John the Baptist, like St. Andrew, and help them to then come and see and have their lives changed for the better. Truly, it's a win-win for us all. If we help to spread the gospel message, we live in a much more wholesome community, in a much more uh, holy society. If we help by our faith, by our message, by our example to spread the gospel message, the ripple effects continue from your encounters with your friends and your family to their encounters with their friends and their family, the ripple effects continue. What those people that I mentioned in so many different ways have made, have been to me to help center my life, parishioners, strangers, all of these blessed opportunities where the Lord has invited someone to be the one who directs for me. I hope and pray that we can be the same for others. May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom we receive in the Eucharist today, the Lamb of God, he who takes away the sins of the world, our Lord, our Savior, body, blood, soul, and divinity, whom we receive in the Eucharist today, may that same Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us 
Strengthen us to be those members of his faithful to lead others to him. The rest is up to him. The rest is in his hands. Let us inspire others to come and to see as well. May God bless us. United as a family of faith, we stand now and profess that which we believe, our Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world come, amen. God has called us each by name. In the spirit of that invitation, we present ourselves and our needs, asking for God's favor upon us. For the church, that we may be truly a witness to Christ's transformative presence in our lives, inviting others to come and follow and become disciples of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that they may do everything in their power to build a society where justice is always pursued, where conflict is resolved peacefully, and where the dignity of every person is upheld. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians around the world may work toward unity through dialogue and a common mission. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the words and actions of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. may continue to inspire new generations of Americans to work to overcome injustice, inequality, racism, and poverty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may respond willingly and generously to God's call, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the intentions of this Mass, for Marian and Anton Pace in commemoration of their 61st wedding anniversary, for Frank Dunn and his continued health, and for the souls of Daniel Pinto, Luis O'Connor, Michael Mangiliano Sr., Peter Lagushi, and Jose Gimotea and Magdalena Gimotea. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers which we bring before you, and answer them if they be in accord with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We thank you for your generosity always in our Sunday collection. This Sunday we have a second collection in support of our winter expenses. If you can imagine what it costs to heat this church, uh, but also just to thank you for your kindness in our winter expense collection today.
sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church, and so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
upon us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and one in heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. We thank you for your kindness in our winter expense collection, our second collection to this, this Sunday. Registration for altar servers is still open. If your child is interested in serving, uh, becoming an altar server, you can contact the parish office. You can speak to me after mass. Uh, so far, we have two young students interested, uh, but I'd like to get a few more, possibly. Give Adam a break. Adam's always serving. Uh, it's got, we love having him up here serving all the time, but he, he deserves one week off, so thank you to Felix for serving this week. But um, So we have some more children in the parish. We'd love to have them. Uh, I'd also like to just point out that tomorrow, in observance of Martin Luther King Jr., the parish office will be closed. We will resume back on Tuesday the 16th. Uh, I'd like to invite now uh, Lindsay to say a few words on behalf of the youth choir auditions. Hi everybody. Our youth choir auditions are coming up this Saturday, so it is not too late to sign up. If you are or know a fourth through eighth grader who is interested in singing with us, please um, come and sign up, come and sing for us. Our auditions are this Saturday from 1 through 4 p.m. and it'll be right here up in the choir loft. And I, we would really love you guys to come and sing for us. We just wanna come meet you. It's a really quick, painless 10 minutes. We wanna meet you and hear you. And to sign up, you can find the link on our Instagram at music at cocaf in the link in the bio. And myself and Christina Maria will also be standing right outside as you guys come out. And we are happy to give you a flyer to help you sign up right there. Uh, whatever you guys need, any questions, you can ask me. I will be leading the direction of the youth choir with my colleague Edward Hughes, our cathedral or organist. And again, I'm Lindsay. Please come and see me outside after Mass if you'd like to sign up for the youth choir. Thanks. Finally, please save the date, um, February 2nd, the Feast of the Presentation of Our Lord Jesus Christ in the Temple. We will have a Mass of Remembrance, a Mass of Remembrance for all children and infants uh, who have died. Uh, in a particular way, we, we pray for all those uh, families who suffer the loss of, of a child's death, whether it be stillbirth or a death in the womb or even a death as a child. Uh, we want to create an opportunity, create a space, a place for all of these families who do mourn the loss of a loved child to come and to find uh, the support of one another. And even if perhaps uh, you have not yourselves experienced this loss, uh, I'd invite you still to come and to be present for those families who have. Uh, as an act of solidarity and support. The Mass will take place on Friday, February 2nd at 7 p.m. So Friday, February 2nd, the Feast of the uh, Presentation of the Lord um, here at the Co-Cathedral at 7 p.m. Uh, we'll have more information and more um, witness talks in the coming weeks. I just wanted to have you to just save that date, a very important Mass for us all. As we know, uh, Deacon Emmanuel continues, has uh, just begun his lecture series, the Sacred Scripture series on the book of the prophet Ezekiel. You're all welcome to join. We're grateful to the 30 or so who have already started the program. It's all on Zoom. You can do it from the comfort of your couch uh, and, uh, and just enjoy uh, the lecture and the, the getting to understand more of the Sacred Scriptures, part of our, part of our uh, faith. Please stand now for the final blessing. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Together we pray, St. Michael, Michael the Archangel, Archangel defend, defend us in, us in battle. battle. 
be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you next week. God bless. Please join us in singing hymn number 569, How Great Thou Art, number 569. Thank you. 